something I was wondering about if if our stories matter, the stories we tell each other, the stories that we pass on to future generations, the stories that we hold up as really cool, really interesting stuff, things that should matter. If the stories that we tell have heroes that are always the exception, they're exceptional, that means that they're they're not like everyone else. There's something different about them. And so they're they are exempt from the rules that everyone else has to play by. If that's the case, if the the person who's outside the bounds of everything else is the hero, then that means that everyone else is what, a slave? Or beholden to something else. But if everyone in the society believes that they are the one, they are the, the one who's exempt from the rules, if they believe that they are the maverick that is, is there to mess everything up, um, where are the stories about everyone working together? <laughs> where are the stories about people finding common ground? Where are the stories about people saying, you know what, we viciously and violently disagree about this, but that doesn't mean we can't be civil um, or we can't work together. I, I I've heard theories about where the modern political divisions come from. It's been decades in the making, and this 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 repetition right now. So it's like seventeen years where we shut down the government and then we, you know, make demands and then we start it back up. Once you've established that it's an effective tool for whatever your reason for doing it is, then why not do it all the time? I'm not saying shut down the government. I'm saying why not use the threat of government shutdown as a tool, as a leverage, which is what I'm afraid is going to start happening. Yeah, there's fat cats. Yeah, there's all this stuff that we we don't want in our government. But then there's also some good things. There's research. <laughs> there's um, security. There's um, our national monuments. There's our out, art galleries. The things that are representative of our highest callings as humans. Uh, the the uh, attempt to describe freedom in a way that makes it a, <clears throat> a right that every human should have, that sort of thing. Um, those, those ideas still exist, but the monuments that encapsulate those ideas are, are shut down, which seems weird. Seems really weird. So where are the stories about compromise? Where are the stories about how to um, find common ground to, uh, to accomplish things that would be impossible to accomplish by one person. It's only through working together that these, these goals can be accomplished. Where are those stories? Why, why are they not more popular? Because everyone wants to be the hero. Everyone wants to be the person that, that makes things happen. There's too many people for everyone to be the maverick. There's there's just too many people at this point on this planet, in this country, for one person to be the maverick. You might look at, well, well, Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve Jobs. That was, it's a one in a million thing. Not everyone can be Steve Jobs. If everyone tries to be Steve Jobs, this is going to be even a even more dysfunctional place to be. Um, he worked because he bucked the system, but if everyone does that, then nothing gets done. So how do we work on stories about getting along? How do we work on stories that glamorize the sexiness of, you know what, we don't get along, but we'll get along. You know, that sort of thing where it's, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. I think that's what's missing. I think that those, those examples, that, that, um, that modeling is, is what's missing. Because if you had models... Uh, of behavior of what to do, 
then it might be easier to emulate rather than, well, I don't know. I've never seen two people work out their differences, so I don't know how to do it. Just something I was thinking about.